Hi, so today I'm going to be giving a very quick overview of uh, the Pixie monitoring tool. Um, Pixie is an open source um, Kubernetes native monitoring tool that is part of CNCF, uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, so let's get into it. So I, at this point, I have uh, Pixie installed on my um, Kubernetes cluster. Now, um, you can use any, any Kubernetes cluster. You could use something locally on your workstation. Um, just uh, please be cognizant that it, uh, you cannot use Docker Desktop. You have to use something like Minikube. Um, in my case, I am using um, AWS EKS. I've already created a cluster on AWS. Um, I have installed the um, uh, Pixie deployment using a Helm chart. And uh, I am logged into the Pixie Live view, uh, which basically is um, uh, giving a high level view of my cluster. So when you log into the Pixie Live, uh, this is essentially what's displayed, which is again, a high level cluster overview. Um, if you scroll down, you can see uh, that I have two nodes uh, on my EKS, two worker nodes uh, at this point. Uh, there's not much, act much activity on this, so uh, you don't see too much CPU. It gives you a high level pod count um, and then gives you also uh, all the different services that are uh, installed. Um, this view can be a little overwhelming just because there's so many different components. Um, what I'd like to drill down into uh, is the specific namespace view. So, you know, typically uh, when you're doing deployments, you will have specific application uh, specific namespaces that. Um, uh, encapsulate all your applications, uh, which is typically what you will want to measure anyway. So, um, so we'll do that. I have a namespace that I created apps, uh, which has my uh, microservices installed. And I can uh, quickly show you. Uh, let me just refresh the view here. So, um, so what you see here is um, a service map, uh, you see the two applications that have been deployed on my uh, namespace. Uh, there's a data client, which is a front-end HTTP service uh, that supports GET and POST requests. And then there's a back-end service um, that I call MySQL DB service, which is basically another uh, web service that abstracts access to a MySQL database. In this case, I'm using um, a MySQL RDS instance on AWS. I've got two pods deployed um, for each uh, deployment. Um, and uh, so this gives you a nice high level overview. It also shows you uh, individually the pods and you can drill down into these pods uh, if you like. Again, I have four pods and you can see uh, those individual pods here in this pod list view. Um, it shows you the residence set size of the memory that's being allocated, that's being used uh, at this point in time and just some kind of some high level metrics. So at this point, you are not seeing any metrics here and that's because I don't have anything running. Uh, so what we'll do is um, I'm gonna run a script which basically triggers a small load on my services. And, and all it is is really uh, uh, just doing a bunch of get and post requests. It's basically creating uh, new users and then subsequently it's searching uh, for those users. So the whole idea is really to generate some traffic so we can see what that view looks like in um, Pixie. So I'm going to um, uh, refresh this view. And again, you can uh, you can go back, you know, uh, this is customizable, so you can go back 30 minutes, um, whatever the time frame that you are looking for. Uh, in my case, because I just ran the script, I can run this again, uh, and there you go. You can see uh, some metrics already. I'm gonna run this one more time. Um, and you can start seeing uh, the service map. Uh, it takes a few seconds for these, uh, for some of the data points to show up, uh, and I think they are now. Um, you can see uh, some of the metrics uh, for each service. Um, and actually, let me do this so this makes more sense. Um, and again, from a topology perspective, um, sorry, um, what you have here, the two endpoints, and in this case, these two IP addresses that you see are my two worker nodes. 
Um, so you're seeing the request coming to the worker nodes um, and then subsequently hitting my data client, which is my front end HTTP service, um, and then invoking uh, the back end service, which is really an abstraction to the MySQL database RDS instance. So uh, these are both Spring Boot apps, um, very bare bones, uh, simple uh, REST endpoints that they expose. Um, and uh, you can see here uh, it's showing the two services. Now these are the uh, Kubernetes um, uh, DNS service endpoints. So uh, in my case, I have apps data client again representing the front end and then MySQL DB service for the back end. Um, you can see some of the high level summary metrics which are useful. Um, you can see the throughput, you can see error rate. I uh, will refresh this again. Um, uh, you can see kind of the, the request count is going up. Um, so this is a really nice view, but I think it really allows you very, Pixie really allows you to easily uh, drill down. So uh, let's say if you wanted to drill down into my data client, which is again, the front end service, um, right away it gives you uh, some of the key metrics. So the four golden signals, right? That they say for, for any microservice, uh, you know, your throughput rate, your error rate, your latency, uh, data throughput um, is, is shown to you via graphical view. Uh, so again, you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, there's no HTTP errors. Uh, we can kind of show you what the latency has looked like uh, from the time that we've been running it. Um, I can easily, again, uh, modify this to, let's say if you want to go back the last 10 minutes, I can do that. Uh, it refreshes that view. Um, you can see the pod list. Uh, now again, if you remember, there were two pods running, so you are seeing two pods that are in healthy state. If for some reason uh, there was an issue with the pod, uh, you'd see um, like a yellow warning type color, uh, and it may even be red if the pod went down for some reason. So uh, it gives you some really good um, summary level metrics that will tell you about the health of your uh, service. Um, <clears throat> now, I. I will point out this is pretty awesome because uh, you know in my application my spring boot i was not using any custom instrumentation code uh, i'm not using any open tracing open telemetry libraries i'm not using spring sleuth um, i am not using any apm agent like datadog or new relic i do not have any grafana dashboards installed on my kubernetes cluster i'm not using prometheus all i did was um, install Pixie and right off the bat, I get a lot of metrics um, uh, that again, when in a microservices type architecture can be very useful uh, as you're trying to understand um, your, your entire service um, services platform. So again, uh, pretty, pretty useful, pretty impressive. Um, Pixie also gives you a number of scripts that come in packets. So um, the, the view that I showed, we started with the cluster view, we went into the namespace view, and then we went into, we drilled down into the services. There's also things like pod. Um, so if I wanted to drill down into a specific pod, so um, let's say I can, I can specify my, so I can see here my data client, so let's do that. And again, for the last 10 minutes, um, and you can see here, right, clearly uh, kind of when we when we trigger this workload, uh, you can see kind of the HTTP request, um, the error rate, latency, and now this is at the pod level, right? So we went from cluster to namespace to service to pod. Um, this is pretty powerful again, um, you know, again, in, in the event where you're troubleshooting, uh, you can get down uh, to a more deeper level. You can even see the process list that you know, it shows you if there's any process. In my case, it's a simple um, uh, Spring Boot application using a Java runtime. So you see that here. Um, show you, shows you that there's one container. If I had sidecars running, um, you'd see that here. Uh, and that's another uh, thing I wanted to call out. Uh, I'm also not using any service mesh, right? I'm not using a sidecar. Um, you know, views like this about a year or two years ago uh, were only possible if you were using uh, you know, a lot of APM uh, custom instrumentation or you were using uh, a site, sidecar um, uh, service mesh, you know, something like Istio uh, and Grafana and what have you. Um, 
Uh, again, another powerful feature at the pod level is uh, the CPU metric. So anytime you're provisioning uh, pods as part of a Kubernetes deployment, um, you have to specify your uh, pod resource requests and your limits. So a lot of times um, you don't know kind of, you know, what the, the utilization will be for your specific pod. So this gives you a really nice view of kind of seeing, you know, if, if, if that metric that you've assigned to your pod is adequate or not. Um, uh, same goes with memory. Um, you can see I've allocated in this case 512 megabytes. You know, I'm running a sizable load uh, and I'm still at 333. So um, gives you some really good metrics again, you know, as you're provisioning resources for your pods. So very, very useful. Uh, if there was error latency at the pod level, uh, you could also see that. Um, other built-in uh, queries that I find um, are, are very helpful. There is um, HTTP data filtered. Um, I also find this uh, as a very useful, very powerful view. It gives you a high level view of all the HTTP traffic. Uh, now the really neat thing about this is you can actually filter down. So uh, typically, obviously, you would not want to see all your services that can be overwhelming. So uh, let's say in my case, if I wanted to just look for uh, my, my, the GET request for my data client um, service. So all I'd have to do essentially is um, data client and I can do get user. And now it is only showing me a specific endpoint for my microservice, which again is pretty neat, right? So. Um, you can see the latency, you can see uh, the circuit, you can see the specific pod. Um, uh, again, you can you can uh, filter based on service, you can do pod, really, really easy to do right from this uh, Pixie interface. Um, <clears throat> you can also see the request response data. So in this case, uh, you can see my request path, which is I'm basically searching for a user uh, using this specific user ID. Um, and you can kind of see the response body that was returned. Uh, similar, you can look at your post requests. Um, so really, really uh, powerful uh, capabilities, uh, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot, um, you know, maybe individual requests or uh, other services. Uh, Pixie also gives you a number of built-in queries. Uh, you can see um, things like DNS within your, um, uh, within your pod. Uh, so, you know, if you were troubleshooting any DNS lookups, uh, you could see that again, you can do that based on filters. Um, Pixie will also give you like JVM metrics that you can look, um, you know, if you're running a lot of Java applications, um, it can show you, um, you can see here, in my case, I only have um, two, two applications. Um, two pods each, so you can kind of see, you know, what that looks like. Um, it also gives you, if you're using Kafka or a lot of SQL, MySQL, uh, it gives you the ability to basically drill down um, and look at, um, you know, Kafka data. In my case, I don't have any Kafka, so obviously we're not going to see anything. Um, but you can profile your Kafka requests. Uh, you can also uh, look at MySQL data. So uh, really powerful uh, platform. Um, um, and I've, I've written a quick short blog that you can look at to sort of get more details about uh, Pixie, you know, some of the things that it does really well, some things that it does not do too well. Um, uh, the, well one thing you need to keep in mind is that um, uh, Pixie is not sort of um, a time series database where you can go back and historically look, you know, going back a week or so. Um, uh, I believe the retention period can be anywhere from a day to two days. Um, and then essentially that data is lost. So really good for real time or short near time monitoring of your Kubernetes cluster services. Um, please read my blog for some more specifics and some things that, you know, Pixie is perhaps not well suited for. Um, so I hope you found this useful. Um, in the future, I will be talking about uh, the new Relic version. So the version we demoed today was the open source implementation. Um, new Relic has uh, acquired this product um, as of last year and uh, have sufficiently added additional capabilities, you know, things like longer retention timeframes 
and so forth. So I will be covering the new Relic uh, version uh, in a future um, podcast. So uh, thanks again for watching.